Drinking potions, crafting items, trading with merchants, and equipping and wearing armor are just a few common mechanics that some games share. The Inventory Module is an extension of Game Creator that allows you to easily define and manage all of these item-related services and how different characters interact with them. Let's start with the basics. Items. An item is the representation of an object that lives in the game. For example, an item can be a potion, a sword, a helmet, or even a flower. To create an item, right-click on the project panel and select Create, Game Creator, Inventory, Item. This will create a new asset with a series of collapsible sections. Let's begin from the top. The ID field is a unique value that is automatically generated every time you create a new item. We recommend changing its value to something meaningful. In this case, I'll rename this as Apple. The parent field is one of the most important ones and lets you define another item as its ancestor. This allows the child item to inherit data from its parent, as we'll see a bit later. The prefab field contains an optional prefab game object that is instantiated when dropping an item onto the world. If none is provided, the item is considered as non-droppable. The first section is the info panel, which can be expanded by clicking on it. It lets you define the actual name of the item, write a description, as well as choose a color and texture sprite. The shape section lets you configure the size and shape of the item. The width and height fields determine the size the item occupies in the inventory list or grid. Weight represents how heavy or light the item is. The max stack field determines how many items can be stacked one on top of the other so that they occupy a single cell of the inventory's user interface or multiple ones. The price section defines how much the item costs and it accepts a currency value and a number. We'll cover currencies more in depth in another video. Let's now take a look at the most interesting parts. The property section lets you define mutable values identified by a name which can change their value at runtime. To create a new property, click on the Add Property button and a new one will appear above. It's important to note that the property ID field is what identifies this property and therefore it must be unique. The Visible field determines whether the property should be visible to the player or not. Icons and color are optional fields that help better represent this property in the user interface. Number is a mutable value. Text is an optional string field that is used to display a localized description. Remember we said item inheritance is a key feature of items? This is where it shines the most. Imagine we are making an RPG game and it will have dozens, if not hundreds of weapons. Let's say each weapon increases the player's strength by a certain amount. We could then go ahead and, for each weapon item, create a property called strength and fill it with the different strength values, names, colors, and sprites. But that would quickly become tedious and not fun at all. Instead, we can create the shared common property strength on a parent item and, if necessary, override their value. And this does not only apply to the first parent, but all the way up to the root. To see this in action, let's create another item called Fruit. And let's add a new property called Calories. Then, we can add this item as the parent of our apple. And we'll automatically see how a new list of properties appear. To override an inherited property value, simply tick the checkbox and type in the new value. For example, a medium apple contains around 90 calories. Let's now see what sockets are and how to use them. Sockets are slots that can contain other items. When attaching an item onto another one, 
their common properties are added together, while those that are not shared are ignored. The prefab socket field is an optional field that represents the game object instantiated as a socket item. This is only relevant to objects that are socketed. The rest of the fields below define how many spaces the socketable item has. Ticking the Inherit from Parent checkbox will inherit the parent's socket slots, just like properties do. To create a new socket slot, click on the Add Socket button and one will appear above. Important, an item that has at least one socket can't be stacked. Hence, when adding a socket to an item, the max stack field will automatically change to one. A socket has two fields, a base item, which determines the sub-item types that can be attached to the socket, and a socket ID field that uniquely identifies it. For example, let's say we want to have a socket slot to put in a rune on our metal sword. We can create an item called rune, which will be the base item for all of our runes. Then, we assign this base item onto our metal sword socket, which tells the metal sword that this weapon can only have rune items attached. The equipment section allows defining equipable items, what they do, and whether a character is allowed to use them or not. The prefab field contains the game object representation attached to the character's limb when equipped. A little further down, we can see the Can Equip Conditions list. These conditions are checked before attempting to equip an item. If the check is successful or no conditions are present, the character equips the item and will execute the On Equip instructions. When unequipping an item, the counterpart on equip instructions are executed. It's worth noting the checkbox that appears at the bottom of the equipment section that reads execute from parent. When this option is ticked, all the conditions and instructions from the parent item will be executed right before the items. We'll circle back to these equipment concepts and see how to define where to equip them and how. The Usage section defines whether an item can be used or not. Using an item may involve destroying it, such as drinking a health potion. Ticking the Consume When Use checkbox will automatically destroy the object after using it. The Can Use conditions dynamically determine if an item can be used at that moment. For example, one could forbid using a health potion if the player's health is at 100%. The on use instructions are executed when using the item. This is where all the logic should be placed. In this case, we'll just print a text message saying, I just ate an apple. But in a real case scenario, it could restore health to the character eating it. The crafting section determines what an item is made of so it can be crafted and dismantled. When crafting an item, the player needs to gather all the ingredients set in the ingredients list. When dismantling an item, it is torn apart into the ingredients listed. Ingredients are references to other items and a specific amount of them. Crafting and dismantling have conditions and instructions lists that allow you to dynamically check whether an item is craftable or dismantable and the effects of executing those operations. We've seen how to create items and all their parts, but how can we actually store them? The answer to that is using the bag component. To create a bag, click on the add component button on any game object and search for bag. This will add the following component with two distinct sections. The bag definition, which allows choosing the bag type, as well as configuring its settings, such as whether it has a maximum weight amount of item cells, and its equipment asset. The stock section lets you add some default items that the bag has from the very beginning. For example, if we want a chest to have three apples by default, we would click on the add stock button, drag and drop our apple item, and change the amount of that item to three. Bags can not only hold items, but can also have different types of currencies. 
To make a bag hold a specific amount of coins by default, we can do the exact same as before, but this time clicking on the Add Wealth button instead, and selecting the desired currency and amount. The Skin UI field lets you select a pre-made user interface design. The player, for example, will likely use an interface where it can equip and use items, while a chest will simply display all items and a button to loot all of them. The Wearer field is an optional one that defines the targeted character wearing the bag's equipment. In most cases, the bag component will be attached to the character itself. That's why this value references itself by default. Now that we've seen how to configure a bag, let's see some practical examples. Let's say we want to open a bag and display the items on the user interface. We can easily do that by using the Open Bag UI instruction and selecting the bag object as the source. We can also add items to a bag using the Add Item instruction. And of course, we can also remove an item using the Remove Item instruction, selecting the item type we want to remove. Great! So far, we've learned how to create items and how to attach components to hold them. Now let's see how we can make a character equip an item. We saw earlier that the bag component has an equipment asset field. This asset allows defining a list of equipment slots and what type of items they contain. To create an equipment asset, right-click on the project panel and select Create, Game Creator, Inventory, Equipment. This will place a new asset that contains an empty list of equipment slots. Let's add a new slot. We can see we have the option to choose a base type item as well as a bone. Let's say we want the character to hold the apple on the right hand when equipping it. Since our apple inherits from the fruit item, we can assign this item to the base field so that any item that inherits from it can be equipped in that slot. Since we're using a humanoid character, we'll choose the right hand from the human drop-down menu. Okay, let's add a bag component onto it and drag and drop the equipment asset onto the corresponding field. Let's add three apples as its starting stock. Let's also create a new actions component below that we can execute to equip the apple item. If we go ahead and click play, we can see how the player starts with three apples in its bag. If we run the actions component, it will equip the apple, instantiating one on its right hand. Note that the inventory module comes with a large collection of pre-made items and examples that you can explore, modify, and use as templates for your own projects. For example, it comes with a complete equipment setup that you can use to equip swords, shields, helmets, and different consumable items. To wrap up this section, let's talk about hotbars. A hotbar is nothing more than an equipment slot that has a usage button assigned. In the examples that the inventory includes, we can see how the default equipment asset has three identical consumable slots. When opening the player's inventory skin, we can see how we can equip consumable items to either slot. When returning back to the game, 
The currently equipped item is displayed at the bottom right corner of the screen with a text that displays the key bound to the usage of the item. As we can see, pressing the corresponding key makes the player consume a potion and drink its contents. This and much more can be learned with the built-in examples of the inventory module. Available now on the Unity Asset Store.